Austin, Texas, Ivan Benz from um, uh, Toronto, Canada, Miguel Fernandez from Madrid, uh, Spain, and Steve Foster from uh, Sydney, uh, Australia. So, uh, first of all, uh, reasons for change. So, uh, in the last 10 years, we got some comments uh, on uh, Model Code 2010, very interesting comments, and uh, there are sufficient uh, uh, reasons uh, and items to be uh, 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 reviewed and to be improved. So we need to, uh, um, in, to increase the consistency with the new provisions for steel fiber and fast concrete. We have worked, uh, uh, we had several meetings uh, together with the uh, group on uh, fiber, steel fiber and fast concrete in shear. And we have uh, uh, achieved, in my opinion, uh, a very good, uh, uh, a very good solution in order to have a consistent approach for reinforced concrete without fibers and with fibers. But we needed to change some, uh, some uh, formulae in the uh, part uh, uh, without uh, fibers. Then to account for new findings, of course, to account for the influence of reinforced uh, ductility classes, to avoid misunderstandings related to level approximation one, uh, to implement new consistent model for load carry directly to support, I will show it later, to explain the similarities between strain-based approaches and then closed form solutions, to provide a statistical data for detailed assessment of existing structures, and to provide some additional guidance for high levels of approximation, for instance, uh, non-linear analysis. Uh, uh, now, uh, the aim of uh, a lever approximation one, I think there was quite a misunderstanding uh, uh, and a lack of explanation in model code 2010. Uh, lever approximation one is just one particular case of lever approximation two, where we assume that the uh, longitudinal reinforcement has reached yielding. And if this is the case, then we can simplify the equation because we know the longitudinal strain. And this is very important, which means that level approximation one is not something which can be isolated and, for instance, compared to tests. For instance, we have, we have seen in the last decade many publications where, they, where level approximation one has been compared to tests. And of course, the performance is very bad, but this was not the intention. This is just related to design. It's, a, it's an assumption uh, which is very useful for design and for assessment, but, we, but, but we, that has nothing to do with comparing to, comparison to test, and it has nothing, nothing to do with the performance of the method. The performance of the method and the accuracy of the method is exactly the same as level of approximation two, in fact. Next uh, is to... Um, uh, uh, um, the, uh, whether we keep the strain-based model models according to model code 2010, or we switch to uh, formulae which look a little bit simpler that can be found in other standards, for instance, in the Eurocode. For instance, in the Eurocode, we have a formula where we can directly calculate the resistance uh, the shear resistance, for instance, of members without shear enforcement, just based on the mechanical parameter. And uh, in the model codes 2010, we have uh, we have a strain based formula, which formally, which means that we calculate the shear resistance for shear or for punching as a function of a strain or or a for, of a rotation. This equation here, they look a little bit more complicated but they, in fact, they are quite simple to use. When we design or when we assess, they are quite simple to use, despite the fact that they look much more complicated than the, under one, but than the other ones. And the big advantage is that they are much more general, because in order to get this kind of, of uh, formula here, we need, we need to do some simplifications. And in order to explain this, we have added this formula here on the left 
hand side of the, of the standard and explaining that this kind of formula here, they can, they can be derived, directly derived from this formula here, just doing some simplifications. There is another uh, uh, equation which, which is valid for shear, which, where we can, uh, when we can get the uh, direct solution of this set of equation here. But then the equation will be quite complicated. So we need to do some sim simplification uh, uh, to get this kind of formula here that we have, for instance, in the Euro code. But then we lose generality. And this is a pity. And for this reason, we have decided to keep the approach that we had in model code 2010 with the strain-based uh, uh, solutions. So uh, we have added, uh, um, uh, so that what we call a, nav a navigation clause, explaining the different, the different level of approximation uh, uh, for members with shear enforcement, level of approximation one, 2A and 2B, it's more or less the same as in model code 2010. In model code 2010, uh, we had one, two, three, and this was this was uh, a, a source of misunderstanding for because in some cases uh, uh, level of approximation three was less accurate than level of approximation two, and the fact is that level of approximation 2A is very useful in some cases, and the level of, of approximation B uh, to B is better in other cases, and this is uh, 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 the engineer, the, the designer can choose between 2A and 2B. Uh, we have also decided to keep the original formulation of 2B, which is based on the, uh, on the compression field uh, theory, uh, uh, and we have removed uh, what we had in model code 2010. In model code 2010, we have tried to find to find a combination between the, let's say, the, 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 the European approach and the, and the North American approach. And this was not very easy to, 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 to use. So we have switched to the original formulation and we have kept and improved this approach here, which is, which is, a pr which is derived uh, from the from 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 the old approach of of model code 978 uh, and 90 in fact uh, but with several improvements so we have also improved well, we, for instance with respect to level approximation 2a uh, where we uh, where we in fact account for the uh, uh, contribution of the um, of the uh, um, uh, shear enforcement and not and we do not account for the contribution of the concrete intention. Uh, in this case, here we have improved uh, the approach because we account we account for the uh, ductility class of reinforcement. So we need to have a plastic redistribution of the internal forces in order to reduce the inclination of the compression field, which means that it makes sense to uh, define to define the uh, minimum compression field inclination as a fact as a function of the um, deformation capacity of the shear enforcement. And this is what we have implemented now in the uh, draft of model code 20, 2020. So it means, which means that we can, we can get significant differences between ductility class A and ductility class C or D uh, reinforcement. If, we, if it is more ductile, we can have larger distributions, which, can, which means that we can activate more stirrups, in fact. And this is very beneficial. Uh, uh, more or less the same, it's related to, we have seen that uh, the minimum shear enforcement can be expressed also as a function of the, of the deformation capacity of the shear enforcements. So what we have in current model code uh, uh, 2010, this is more or less valid for ductility class A, Barry, but if we have a, a uh, reinforcement with a larger deformation capacity, then we can, then it is beneficial, that, which means that we can reduce, slightly reduce the minimum uh, shear uh, reinforcement. Um, this is a very, uh, I think that this is a good uh, 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 improvement of the, 
of the of the model. Um, we have seen in the past that very often uh, that very often the uh, compression field has been used also for very small uh, 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 compression field inclinations, uh, which also for cases where we have where we have uh, uh, concentrated loads acting very near to the to the support, and we had in the past empirical formulations to solve this problem. Here, what we have done now, we have derived analytically from a stress field and the stress and the strat and the strat certain time model. We have derived uh, a formula which gives exactly the same result as a strat and die model or a stress field. And the, and the formula looks in fact quite simple. We have in fact the contribution of concrete, which can be carried directly from the load to the support just with this, with this uh, direct strat without the need of the stirrups. And we have an additional component by the shear enforcement, let's say the stirrups, which can be activated in this portion here of the, of the member. With respect to punching, we have seen that very often we have a, a significant uh, hidden safety, which is related to the fact that in actual flat slabs, we can, we can have um, um, we can have compressive forces, compressive membrane, uh, membrane forces, which are uh, activated by the deformation of the slab, of the slab in this portion of the of the of, of, of the slab. Uh, if we have the problem is that uh, all punching shear uh, equation they have been calibrated and also derived from the model of isolated of isolated tests and the isolated tests there are there are free to rotate in fact so there are no constraints at the edges of this element here but if we put this element here inside an actual slab then the surrounding concrete Will 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 work against this rotation, which means that we will increase the stiffness of the slab. And if we increase the, the stiffness of the slab, then we will also increase the resistance. So, in the last year, we have done quite a, <coughs> a <coughs> sorry a significant research in this field, and we have derived very very rational uh, models in order to account for this. For instance, a very simple. Uh, uh, improvement is that we uh, reduce the uh, rotation, uh, uh, which is which is uh, necessary in order to calculate the punching shear res resistance, uh, with this factor here, which is based on a rational model. In fact, it looks very simple, but it is based on a rational model, and this uh, this allows us to increase significantly the uh, punching shear resistance compared to the case of, of the uh, isolated test uh, specimen. But we have also seen that this is, this, is, this is the case where we have large rotations. If we have a significant amount of longitudinal enforcement, then the rotation will be very small. And in this particular case, then the increase due to me compressive membrane action will be much smaller. And this is this can be accounted for with this very simple uh, model here. So we have a significant punching shear increase for members with small amount of locking reinforcement, but practically no increase for members with, signif with a significant amount of uh, hogging uh, flexural reinforcement. Uh, we have more detailed punching shear provisions for level approximation four. Uh, for instance, we can calculate, so this is the uh, failure criterion which is, gift, which is given already in Model Code 2010, which is very general. In fact, we have seen that it is very general. Uh, we, we give provisions at the level of approximation one and two and three to calculate analytically the load rotation relationship, but we can also uh, improve the accuracy 
uh, when we ca if we calculate the load rotation relationship with nonlinear analysis. This is just accounting for the flexural deformation. And we, there are nowadays tools in order to calculate the flexural uh, uh, deformation, which are, which are quite reliable. And, and we have defined a little bit better in level approximation for uh, how to proceed with this. So this approach here, this is used more and more, in fact, for the assessment of, uh, uh, of existing, existing structures. And in, man, in many cases, we have seen in, in the last 10 years that we can save uh, 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 structures, we can avoid uh, uh, retrofitting, and we, or we can reduce the amount of retrofitting with this particular uh, method here. This is just an example. This is uh, done in, 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 in our office. This is a, this is a large uh, parking garage, 200 meters lo long, and there was a quite significant lack of resistance because the soil here was too, too, too thick and the uh, differential differential settlement have been neglected in the design. Uh, this is the level of approximation two. This is the uh, uh, punching shear force as a function of the rotation. This is the uh, level of approximation two. This is the failure criterion. Uh, this would be the punching shear resistance. If we account for the compressive membrane action with this, with this very simple formula, here, with this very, sim very simple formula here, then we get this relationship. Oops, sorry. This very simple uh, relationship here. This is very simple to calculate. We get already this improvement, enhancement of the, of the punching shear resistance. And if we uh, calculate the load rotation uh, relationship with uh, a nonlinear finite element uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, program, then we get this punching shear resistance here. So I think that in terms of uh, of assessment of existing uh, uh, structures, this is a quite uh, significant uh, improvement. So thank you very much for your uh, for your attention. Thank you right here. Very nice. Um, I think we've only got time for one question because we're gradually creeping backwards and backwards. So, one question. Oh, oh there is someone. Hi, Aurelio, you going on from Delft. Um, just out of curiosity, there's one question. Looking back to the last slide you had about uh, level four approximation for punching. Is there extent um, intention to also include this kind of level four approximation for shear? Yes, good question. Thank you, Yuguang. Yes, it's it's exactly the same. We can calculate the uh, strain, the longitudinal strain in a slab, accounting for the uh, compressive membrane action or with uh, the uh, redistribution of the internal forces. And of course, this can be done also with the level of approximation. Uh, 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 for, uh, for uh, in shear, not only for not only for for uh, punching shear. This can be done for members without shear enforcement and also with shear enforcement. We have implemented for the for instance this approach in the Annex I for existing for the assessment of existing structures in uh, the latest draft of uh, mod of, of uh, Eurocode two. And it's also uh, possible to do it with, uh, uh, with this approach here um, in the model codes 2020. And again, this is the very nice uh, uh, advantage of the strain-based uh, approach compared to the uh, uh, closed form formulation of, uh, of, of your code, because we can account for all these cases in a very consistent manner. Thank you very much for the question. I forgot to, to, to say it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aurelio.